Hey guys, welcome. Welcome back to Artistic License, my Thursday stream where we do a little bit of whatever I want. And today we're going to be playing Doki Doki Literature Club. Um, yes, this is our Halloween stream. We're dividing it in two because by looking at the data, I, I think it'd probably take about two streams to finish this game, but I've never played it before. I, I missed it whenever it was super popular. Um, so we're playing it today for Halloween. But first, of course, you guys know how it goes. We're gonna do a little. We're gonna do a little quiz first to kind of get us warmed up. Um, here we go. So we're gonna be doing today. Which paranormal being are you? So we're gonna enter in our name and welcome in Leo Azu. Um, I I feel like I have seen you before, but I think it's been a minute. So welcome back. So happy to have you here again. Um, if you uh, if you want to, you can do the the quiz with me. And if you do, tell me what you get. All right, so you can feel the evil so near. Where is it coming from? My past, which I cannot be free of. Your mortality has no hold on me. It lurks around every corner, waiting to seduce me. Inside of me. Oh. <laughs> the judgmental eyes that turn to scrutinize me. There is no evil, only opportunities. Oh, I don't know. I really like that one. I was about to do this one, but I'm thinking only opportunities. I'm down for that. Okay, here we go. You may choose one blessing, choose wisely. Power to be known, acceptance, satisfaction, peace or control. Hmm, which one should we do? Which one should we do? Um, I want to do, I think, satisfaction. What traits are you drawn to? Ambition, loyalty, naivete, compassion, attentiveness or devotion? Um. I think compassion is what I'm more drawn to. Where will you go? Away, everywhere, nowhere. <laughs> to hide, to create, home. Well, to create, obviously, I am on here creating the content. What is your prison? My nature, my limitations, my desires, other people, my body, my traumas. Ooh, um, other people. Other people are my limitation or my prison. Is there hope? Hope means something different to me now. <laughs> so ominous. I wish, but no. No, not for a while now. I have to believe there is. Hope is all there is. I have no need for hope. Uh, I have to believe there is. I think there is hope. What do you fear? Being hated, myself, vulnerability, favor, deprival, isolation. Oh, ah, uh, isolation. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Okay. Um, release, sacrifice, understanding, a myth, recognition, and advantage. Understanding, for sure. What do you lack? Conviction, concern, humanity, contented, contentedness, restraint, more and more every day. <laughs> uh, I would say maybe uh, concern. Welcome in, Kendra. You got the first. How are you doing today, Kendra? We're doing our quiz right now. Uh, how will it end? In violence by giving up in blood. It won't if I get my way. Endings are lies we tell ourselves. In defeat. Endings are lies we tell ourselves. Let's go with that. Oh, I got shapeshifter. Ooh, okay. I like that answer. Um, you would break yourself into a thousand pieces, shatter every bone, and pry off every inch of skin to be what you think others want. You've become so many different things over the years. At this point, you've been everything except at peace. You can form and change and adapt and desert entire pieces of yourself. So when will it be enough? Thank you so much for the, the wow. It is wow. Shapeshifter is a great answer, right? Welcome in, by the way, Mega Boot Lord. Um, I think I have not seen you before. If I have seen you, then I, I apologize, but um, welcome into the stream. All right. Uh, when will it be enough? When has, e has it ever been enough for them? And when has it ever made you whole again? Speaking of, who are you anymore? Do you even know? How long has it been since you've recognized that face in the mirror? Are you still you? Wow, ominous. Okay, I'm gonna put the link again in the chat for those that have just joined us. Um, if you guys do the quiz too, Tell me what you got. Tell me and pay, copy and paste this this bit so I can read what it says. It looks like shapeshifter is most people, so I got the the popular one for that. But there's also ghost, witch, vampire, werewolf, or siren. So that's interesting. All right, you got siren. 
You got Siren? Um, that's awesome. I, I love Sirens. I think they're cool. Kitty, welcome in. Oh my gosh, all of my friends are here. I'm always so surprised when all of my friends are here and I'm streaming at a different time. I am still in Central Time right now. Um, things are still playing out. Uh, so I moved the time of the stream to kind of accommodate everything that's going on right now. But here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do this stream, guys. Here we go. Doki Doki Literature Club. So let me get into the game here. I've never played this game. This is totally blind. I don't know what to expect. Um, I've got a hair in my mouth. What is happening? Go away. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> um, you're welcome to backseat game. If you know how I'm supposed to play or if there's secrets or things that I, I need to try, um, you're more than welcome. Backseat gaming is totally okay. Um, but if you could try to reduce the spoilers, since this is a blind playthrough, I want it to be a true blind playthrough. All right, so this game is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Fabulous, I am neither of those things. I still got a hair in my mouth. Haha, I got it, I think. Okay. Individuals suffering from anxiety or depression may not have a safe experience playing this game. For content warnings, please visit blah, 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 blah. I know this is a weird game. Okay. But it's all right. By playing Doki Doki Literature Club, you agree that you are at least 13 years of age and your consent, and you consent to your exposure of highly disturbing content. Yes, I agree. Give me the content. Give me the content. Exactly. Heck yes, Kendra. Give me that content. Okay, I understand. I understand. They want to make sure you know. They want to make very sure you know. This music does sound kind of like the starting music that I picked out. That's funny. That was unintentional. I just picked out something sugary sweet. Okay, here we go. New game. Please enter your name. I'm Karen. Okay. How do those levels look? Bree, welcome, welcome. Let's see. I think the game is a little... It looks like it's a little bit loud compared to me. Let me turn me up just a bit. Let me turn the game down just a bit. You'll tell me how that sounds. Tell me if the, if the game's still overpowering me or not. Okay. Hey! I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. Okay, so this is the childhood friend's choice, I guess. You know, the kind of friend you never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently and I would get tired of waiting up. <laughs> yes, Kitty, I did sing the song when we came to that question. That's what I expected to see too. <laughs> uh, but she's going to chase after me like this. I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. Ah, <laughs> I overslept again, but I caught you this time. Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Eh, you say that like you were thinking about ignoring me. Maybe I was, girl. That's mean, Karen. I guess I'm mean. <laughs> well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean, even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's what she wants to say. Uh, we cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Karen, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm not really interested in joining any, joining any clubs. I haven't been looking either. Eh, that's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? Did I? <laughs> Doesn't sound like something I would agree to. I'm sure it's possible that I did in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Wow, the pro tag on this is mean. Um, Sayori likes to worry a little too much about me when I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know? And you know you're happy now. Oh, thank you so much for the follow, um, Monica. 
Um, yeah, who should you date? I don't know, we just started. I only know Sayori right now. Um, and I know you're happy now, but I die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. Um, but y'all tell me, I mean, y'all tell me when we get to that part, uh, if there's, if you have preferences, what I should do. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. All right, all right. I will not worry. Okay. I'll look at a few clubs if that makes you happy. No promises, though. Yes, this is the first time, Bree. This is the very beginning of the game. So it's going to be this stream, and we're going to try to finish it next week. Oh, Monica... Mm, mm, on Monica? Okay. All right, I got you, Monica. Uh, will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. So you're so pushy. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? Why do I? I do what I want, girl. More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit, even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Oh yeah, I have to check out the clubs. Siori wants me to check out the clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello? Sayori? Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize I'm the only one left in the classroom. Oh my gosh. Maybe this dude does need help from Sayori. I just thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you were just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know... Know what? Well, that you could come to my club. Sayori. Yeah! There's no way I'm going to your club. <laughs> Meanie. Sayori is vice president of the literature club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title Vice President. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Oh, come on, please. Well, the game's called Doki Doki Literature Club, so I'm sorry, Karen protagonist. You're probably gonna have to join the literature club. Why do you care so much anyway? Well, I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. Oh, okay, so I'm promised already. And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. Well, you, know, you should have led with the cupcakes, girl. I would have been so into it. Okay, don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead or if she's so cunning as to have planned all of this out. Both? Good, both. Uh, I let out a long sigh. Fine, I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? There you go, that's that's the Karen I know. Um, yes, let's go. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, but generally used for third year classes and activities. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here! I told you, don't call me new member. Ah, I glance around the room. Welcome to the literature club. It's my pleasure meeting you. Sayori always says nice things about you. Aw, seriously, you brought a boy? I'm not a boy, but I guess I am in this game. Okay. Uh, way to kill the atmosphere. Wow, don't be like that. Uh, Karen, what a nice surprise. Welcome to the club. All words escape me in this situation, this club is full of incredibly cute girls! <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I agree. Um, out of these three, I, girl one, she looks great. Uh, what are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. S sorry. <laughs> Natsuki. <laughs> girl two has that Black Widow logo in her hair. Oh my gosh, she does. You're right, kitty. Maybe she's an assassin. <laughs> That girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She's also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly into my ear, 
then turns back towards the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest of the club. Oh, that must be the pretty one. Okay, don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Ah, uh, well, it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monika, is that right? That's right. It's great to see you again, Karen. Monika smiles sweetly. We don't know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Oh, okay. Monika was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic, basically completely out of my league. <laughs> All right then. Uh, so having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... You too, Monika. I guess Monika makes me nervous. Come sit down, Karen. We made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hell yeah, that's what I'm here for. Cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Okay. Sorry, I got a little too excited. Then how about I make some tea as well? That sounds nice. The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so that there is one space left next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, Kitty, I'll make I'll make you cupcake in the in the Discord server um, after the stream. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! It does seem appropriate. We should have a new cupcake for this stream. Ooh! Natsuki lifts the foil of the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. Aww! Yeah! The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make the ears. Oh my gosh, I want some kitty cat cupcakes! So cute! I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. Eh, well, you know. Just hurry and take one. So Yuri grabs the first one, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious! So Yuri talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. Aw, oh, nice. Uh, thank you so much for the lurk, Kendra. You guys know we love our lurkers here. I learned the cupcake. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Wow, that's such a Karen move. <clears throat> Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. <gasps> is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. <laughs> it, it was just coincidence, I think, Kitty, because um, that's the that's one of the uh, rotating messages that I have come up every so often on its own. Thank you, Natsuki. Why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Haven't I heard this somewhere before? Made them for you or anything. Eh? I thought you technically did. Sayori said... Well, maybe, but not for y you, you know, you, dummy. Oh, gosh. All right, all right. I guess Natsuki was hoping for some other kind of uh, new member. She's not happy with me. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers give us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I, I guess. Uh, don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. It's working. Uh, that's not... Insulted Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know, I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but at least I enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So, what made you consider the Literature Club? Um, I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Oh, I don't get to choose, I guess. Okay. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... That's okay, don't be embarrassed. Oh, thank God. Um, we'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Yeah, each of them does have a red ribbon. I did notice that too, Kitty. They've got them in different spots, like hers is around the neck. Uh, Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? 
you could probably be a board member of any of the major clubs. Weren't you the leader of the debate club last year? Ah, uh, well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all of the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. Aw, that's nice. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica really is a great leader. Yeah, and then she's got the ribbon here, but she's also got a red ribbon in her hair. Yuri, also in agreement. Then I'm surprised that there aren't more people in the club yet. The ribbon must be part of their school uniform. Hey, Lunar. Lunar, you probably know all about this game. I have not played it. It is, um, it is blind for me. It must be hard to start a new club. You could just, you could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting all the effort into starting something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right everyone? Yeah! We'll do our best. You know it. Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard to find these three. Maybe that's why they're all so delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So Karen, what kinds of things do you like to read? Well, uh, <laughs> is he gonna say, do comics count? Considering how little I've read in the past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga, uh. <laughs> I mutter quietly to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me, and telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. I feel like I have the same taste as Yuri. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination and completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately, and I read a, uh, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasped something I can relate to on a minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Oh no. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you. Well, I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. So real horror is often successful at challenging or at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Uh, I hate horror. <laughs> oh, why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What, what gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called, don't say that loud, and give that back. I don't know what her beef with me is, Kitty. I don't know. But Natsuki's got something. She's got some issue with me. She doesn't like me. I don't know what I did to her. Fine, fine. Eh, hey, your cupcakes, your poems, everything you do is just as cute as you are. Sayori so slides behind Natsuki and puts her hand on her shoulders. I'm not cute. <laughs> Natsuki, you write your own poems? Oh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? N no. Oh, thank you so much for the subscription, Brie. Oh, cool. Love this. I appreciate it so much. Six months. Wow. That's crazy. Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Uh, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Yeah, Kitty, I had to make sure it was all about um, cuteness and literature this stream. <laughs> uh, do you have writing experience too, Yuri? 
Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. Mm, I guess it's the same for Yuri. Oh, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay, I have an idea, everyone. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. The next time we meet, we'll share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Um, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Plus, now that we have a mem new member, I think it will help us all get a be a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Karen? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still a problem. Oh, uh, what's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Sayori so may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and, um, I lose my train of thought. Oh no! Oh no, look at their faces! I have deeply disappointed these girls. All four girls still stare back at me with dejected eyes. But, but, but I'm sorry, I thought... Hmm. Karen. You all... I'm defenseless against these girls. I am a monster, oh my god. So Yori's my favorite? I think Yori's my favorite so far. This one right here, Yuri. The, um, the one that likes fantasy. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Oh, they're happy again. Yes, I'm so happy! So Yori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey, hey, hey! You really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. Then that makes it official. Welcome to the Literature Club. Yuri's my fave too, but Monica has the best hair. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Monica with the ponytail. It's, it's good. She's got really good hair. Okay. Ah, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Karen, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. Hee hee hee. Yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside of me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up the food. Hey Karen, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right, Siori and I never walk home together anymore because she's always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay! With that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in Literature Club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. All right. I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Okay, mini game. It's time to write a poem. Pick words that you think your favorite club member will like. Something good might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. Oh, okay. Ha, huh. what do we think? What do we think Yuri would like? Or should I go for one of the others? It looks like I can't do Monica. I can only do Natsuki, Sayori, and Yuri. Okay, fireflies? Okay, fireflies? Oh, she likes fireflies. Doki Doki Eternity, Lust Party, can Defeat. Strawberry sadness memories and capable. Oh, what about sadness? Will Yuri like sadness? No! Oh my gosh! <laughs> uh, disarray, vertigo, adventure, childhood, rainbow, inferno, uncanny cheeks, bed, nature. What do y'all think? Adventure? Okay. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Apparently, this is who we're going for. Um, we're going for Sayori, whether we want to or not. Okay. Essence, treasure, destiny, unstable, nightgown, peace. Vitality, Alone, Giggle, Music. <laughs> yeah, I know, me too, Kitty, but it's, I, I would think your choices are working, but it's not. Um, let's go, let's go with Destiny. Oh, she likes that. Play, Electricity, Melancholy, Entropy, Landscape, Clumsy, Covet, Precious, Whisper, Sugar. Um, landscape. Haha! -ha! 
Okay, excitement, disaster, anger, anxiety, wonderful pink melody, sunset, existence, love. Existence? Aha, okay, I think I'm starting to get it. She wants the more like, over, like um, smart stuff, smart people stuff. Kawaii, dark, puppy, shopping, starscape, skipping, kitty, desire, empty, joy. Oh man, I really wanna pick kitty, but I don't think that's Yuri. Let's go with dark. Oh no. Okay, that was Sayori too. Well, whatever, we're not getting Natsuki and that's fine. She has a problem with me, so I'm not about her. Sparkle, socks, happiness, fear, cry, heaven sent, pain, broken, fickle, lazy. Yuri's deep? Okay, heaven sent then. So we gotta pick deep words. Charm, death, pout, hurt, extraordinary, skirt, smile, whirlwind, kiss, aura. Aura? Haha. -ha. Despise, imagination, misery, rose, intellectual, pure, graveyard, peaceful, depression, or breathe. Intellectual. Okay. Loud, vibrant, lollipop, blanket, ocean, time, fireworks, tragedy, explode, embrace. Embrace. Oh, Natsuki liked that one a little bit. Okay, vivid, promise, sweet, milk, cage, family, warm, universe, daydream, tears, universe. Okay, bliss, variance, awesome, playground, hope, poof, sing, hop, extreme, infinite, infinite, Efful effulgent, ooh, that's a big word, uh, twirl, waterfall, mouse, special, portrait, marriage, boop, <laughs> boop, <laughs> amazing, or email. Okay, all right, Lunar, I do need to hydrate a lot for this, I'm doing a lot of talking since it's a you know, um, uh, that type of game. I can, Otome game, I guess. Only the other way around. The one with whatever the word is for when it's dating girls. Okay. Uh, beauty, uncontrollable, cute, sticky, anime, sticky. <laughs> anime friends, valentine, unrequited, raindrops, marshmallow, unrequited. Um, feather, secretive, disown, cheer, horror, agonizing, pleasure, ambient, dream, forgive. Ambient. Okay. Bubbles, scars, flea, wrath, fun, jumpy, flower, journey, color, disoriented. I just gotta pick the big words. Um, they gotta pick the big words. Okay. Candy, fantasy, misfortune, silly, together, philosophy, unrestrained, shiny, suicide. Ooh, that's dark. Laugh. Um, we're gonna go with fantasy. Oh, okay. I was not expecting that. Um, crimson, question, grief, captive, nibble, holiday, climax, games, bunny, dance. Grief. Oh. They, I guess they all like some of the darker words. She did say fantasy, but fantasy wasn't one of her words. Okay, last word. Massacre, whistle, swimsuit, atone, jump, fester, incongruent, bouncy, sensation, romance. Incongruent, there we go. Okay, we didn't get mostly Yuri, so that's good. Let's see what happens next. Okay, hi again, Karen. Glad to see you didn't run away on us, ha ha ha. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Karen. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a co commitment for you. Yeah, me too, Kitty. I can't wait. I hope it does Mad Lib it for us. But I don't know. I don't know if it was just that mini game or if we're going to get to actually read poems later. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on. Like, he deserves any slack. So you already told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. Oh my god, Natsuki, why you got such a bone to pick with me? What did I do to you? And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. That's exactly what I plan to do, okay? Don't hate. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps their manga collection in the club room. <laughs> Natsuki finds herself stuck between Monica and Manga. Manga is literature. I agree. I agree, Natsuki. That's the best thing you've said so far. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Karen always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. Well, they had cupcakes yesterday, so I think I'm having fun so far. He helps me with busy work without me even asking. Really? Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Sayori, that's because your room is so messy, it's distracting. <laughs> wow. And you're almost, and you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Karen can become good friends, too. Um, Sayori, hmm? As usual, some, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know? Well, wait, Sayori? Me? 
Uh, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? Never mind. Sayori so made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what do I do? I'm sorry, Yuri. I was thinking. Good! Good! My poem is wooing her. <laughs> I guess that means it's up to me to rescue the situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy, no matter what. Is that so? Yeah, I won't make a big deal if you don't want it to be. All right, well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out. So I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. <gasps> oh, Yuri, you're so sweet. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She's doing it on purpose. That's not accidental. She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expect Monica to kick off some scheduled activities at the club, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So Yuri and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she's waiting for the chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more, but at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of the book. It looks like the same book she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Uh, crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. <laughs> she sneaks another glance at me and our eyes meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in the book. Sorry. I was just spacing out. I mutter this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed it in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason, just curious how come you have two copies of the same book? Uh, well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday... Uh, that's not what I meant. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. She did! She was thinking of me when she walked by the bookstore and she bought it for me. I'll definitely start reading it soon. Well, yeah, you have to now. Um, I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What is it about, anyway? Well, mm, Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. All right. I just wanted to make sure you don't accidentally, make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escaped from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of, that's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so the dark turn came out of nowhere. <laughs> Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Karen? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forget that Yuri is into these things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's always the quiet ones, you know. It's just those kinds of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals or their own philosophy that they believe in, then suddenly when you thought you related to the protagonist, they're made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm so sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's all right then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books or writing fill my thoughts, 
I kind of forget to pay attention to other people, so I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. Yuri, you are hella relatable. You don't need to worry. She definitely has a hint of crazy. Oh yeah, for sure. But I, I feel like I feel like my crazy and her crazy are compatible crazy, you know what I mean? And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club, after all. Uh, that's... well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? You don't have to. Oh, what are you saying? Just a moment ago, you said you're looking forward to it. Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put into my bag. All right, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. All right. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company, as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing, maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. <gasps> so sorry, I was just... Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean, uh, <laughs> here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's, then hold my book more between the two of them. Uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Uh, I guess it makes it kind of difficult to turn the pages. Here. Oh, we can see it. Okay. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Uh, I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me, as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Eh? To turn the page. Oh, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again, and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Uh, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. That's probably the least I can do. Aw, uh, she's so nice, since you've been so patient with me. Yeah, thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume she finishes the page before me, so I turn it of my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey Yuri, this might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways, but she also second guesses all of the things she says and does. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything, but they're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. I, I see. Yuri remains silent for a moment. But Karen, that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Oh, that's so embarrassing that you think that. Wait, wait! I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Oh my gosh, poor Yuri. Sorry, I really didn't know you were so self-conscious about that sort of thing. I guess I more meant it's kind of cute. <laughs> what are you saying all of a sudden? I... Okay, everyone. I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. Oh! Okay, maybe we do get to Mad Lib. Okay, we might not have enough time if we wait too long. Uh, Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is that all right, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. It's not... It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. All right. I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I only read it with you? Um, I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm... In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. 
It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know. That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. All right. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. By the way, do you remember to write a poem last night? Yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait. Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. Of course it is. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who should I show the poem to first? Yuri, Yuri, Yuri! Yuri seems the most experienced, so I should start with her. Start with Sayori, too late, Lunar. I can go to Sayori next. I can trust her opinion to be fair. I'll do Sayori second. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. Uh, what was that? Did you say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, then ends up covering her whole face. Oh no, but she liked my poem! He's gonna hate me. I don't hate you, Yuri! You really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Uh, that's... I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? <laughs> Yuri takes a deep breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicate you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Well, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Huh? Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. I guess we don't get to read an actual poem. I guess it doesn't work like that. It's just we pick out the words that the girls like. I just meant, um, Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her fingers along the words in the poem, as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah, okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers, and having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There's so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Not key can be a little biased, though. Biased? How? Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's okay, Yuri. I don't like Natsuki either. It's fine. I'm not sure if, it, if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thoughts and process with it. Yuri smiles dreamily as if it's a rare opportunity for her, which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Okay, so we get to read Yuri's poem. Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber globe, bathing. It must be this one, the last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time, the last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing air of the present but living in the past. The light flickers, I flicker back. Oh, I like it. I'm sorry, I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all but it took you a long time to read. Yeah, it was actually really nice, right, Kitty? Well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting's pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I liked the poem. Even though it's short, it's really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. No, not at all. I'm really glad you liked it. I'll be honest, since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Karen. Really? I must have totally missed the point. I don't know why they think it's about ghosts. I suppose you only did glance over it after all. But remember, the poet expresses their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. I thought it was about um, time passing and, and, the, and 
future, uh, things changing in the future and, um, you know, it not being like it used to be. Like changing to, uh, to LED lights or something like that. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering, her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past. Yeah, 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 that's what I thought it was about. Um, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. Uh, it's nothing, really. Yours was impressive, too, so... Nah. If anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, I was really nervous about doing all this, but in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm gonna keep doing my best for you, Karen. Ah, uh, me too. Okay, we'll do say we'll do yeah, Sayori. We'll do Sayori next. Okay. This is a good poem, Karen. Are you sure it's your first time? Of course. It's not that good. Am I the kind of guy who would be writing poems in his spare time? Uh, I guess you're right. But that's why it impressed me. Well, to be honest, I was afraid that you wouldn't do it seriously, or that you wouldn't write one at all. I'm really happy just that you wrote one. Wow, so you're, you're so easy to impress. It just reminds me of how you're really part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in this club room. Well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean it'll break. I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Karen. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people. That's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I just joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. And I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That will be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm gonna hold you to that then. Yay! <laughs> now you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. Okay. Uh, we'll see about that. Okay, dear sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever, but I'm not mad. I want breakfast. <laughs> I want breakfast too. That sounds good. Sayori. It was. That was a really good last line. This is just a guess, but did you wait until the morning to write this? No. <laughs> just a little bit. She waited till the last minute. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least it makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It's not a bad poem. It came out nice, or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially the last line. I made eggs and toast. Oh, that sounds really good. I want some eggs and toast. I'm streaming before dinner. I'm gonna go have dinner after this, so I'm hungry. Even though you were late to school. It's bad to skip breakfast. It is bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. I know I get very cranky if I don't have my coffee in the morning. This was so much fun. Monica's the best. Uh, yeah, but next time I won't forget. And I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. Okay, we're gonna show it to Monica because fuck Natsuki. Hi, Karen. Having a good time so far? Yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? All right, I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Karen. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mmm, good job, Karen. I was going oh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. <laughs> that way, it always counts when I put in some effort. <laughs> That's not very fair. That's super fair, Monica. Come on now. Well, I guess it worked anyway. 
You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism, unlike Sayori who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness. Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write like that effectively, both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel, or letting them deeply analyze all of the nuances. It can take years of practice, but I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. I never really asked, though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. Do you know, you do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn by trying new things. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased towards their own kind of styles, but I'll always help you find what suits you most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to be not very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Okay, hole in wall. It couldn't have been me. See? The direction. The sparkling protrudes. A noisy neighbor. An angry boyfriend. I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel, blind, like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas. Already scorched with permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep, stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out, and he, on the other side, was looking in. Oh wow, that's scary, Monica. So what do you think? It's very freeform, if that's what you call it. It's scary, that's what I call it. I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style's gotten pretty popular nowadays. What the heck indeed, Kitty, right? That's a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between the words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone's better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on paper and tidy it up later. I agree, Monica. I give that same advice. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big, dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, so I guess as we get to know everybody, we will learn Monica's secret. She obviously has one. All right, let's go, Natsuki. Karen, if you're not gonna take this club seriously, then go home. F you, girl. What, ha what? Harsh. What, you expect me to believe that you actually put effort into this? You haven't even read it. Do you think I'm stupid? I'm not a writer. Maybe it's not very good, but yeah, I did put an effort. We all start somewhere, right? If you're still proud of the first poem you ever wrote, then I'd like you to read it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Painful to think about. Fine. Well, sorry. You should be sorry, Natsuki. You're a bitch. God. You'll get better anyway. I tell you what to improve, but you're better off just trying again. You're so helpful. Fair enough. Well, to each their own, I guess. Anyway, I guess I gotta share mine now. Knowing you, you'll probably think it's stupid. No, probably not, but I do think you're stupid. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try, but that's about it. It's not terrible, but I don't like you. I'm sorry, Natsuki. Yeah, I told you that you weren't gonna like it. This is the most her poem ever. I know, right, Kitty? <laughs> <laughs> Whoever made this game, the poems for each of the girls, these are just so perfect. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff, so people don't even take my writing seriously. 
but isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like it when it's easy to read but hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening, so I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme in the end that I make it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. Oh my god. This girl. I'm glad you learned something. Thanks, Natsuki. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, I guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Natsuki's feeling annoying. That's what's going on right here. She needs to calm down. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing ability. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayuri and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Huh? Did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. Excuse me. I guess you could say it's fancy. Uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? Natsuki, it was both cute and symbolic. My god. It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I know that. It just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Uh, you mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple suggestions. Hmm, I was looking for suggestions. I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it. And Karen did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. Mm, and Karen liked my poem too, you know. I liked all the poems! He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh, I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. <laughs> That's not what I... Um, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Karen appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Natsuki didn't give me any advice. She is so mean. Ha, huh, and how do you know when he didn't appreciate my advice more? But she's like fake mean. I think that's why I'm getting bothered by her, because I usually like the mean characters. But she's not. She's like she's like fake. Like, I'm, I'm going to be nice mean, or my self-esteem's so low. That's why I'm mean. Like, it's just, it's annoying. Are you that full of yourself? I know. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Uh, um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Karen started showing up. Oh, shots fire! Pew, pew, pew. Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little... It doesn't involve you. I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turn towards me as if I just noticed I... They just noticed I was standing there. Karen, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Oh my god. Ladies. Please. What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Karen. W wait. There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessary limiting to yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Karen? Um, well, how did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing, but whoever, whoever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. So of course, that's going to be, oh shoot. I love that I can choose Sayori in this, uh, but I have to. I have to go 
I have to go with my heart. I don't think either of them is wrong. I just think Natsuki is mean about it. <laughs> They're both right in their own way. But Natsuki, maybe you should be a little nicer about your opinion. We're going to go with Yuri. Natsuki, you're right that I liked your poem. See? Wait. That's not an excuse for you to be so mean. Oh, thank God. Yes, that is how I feel, game. You shouldn't pick a fight just because someone's opinion is different. That's not what happened at all. That's exactly what happened, Natsuki. Yuri wouldn't even take my poem seriously. Mm-hmm, <laughs> I understand. Yuri? Uh, you're a seriously talented writer. It's no secret that I was impressed. Well, that's... But here's the thing. No matter how simple or refined someone's writing style is, they're still putting feelings into it, and it becomes something really personal. That's why Natsuki felt threatened when you said her poem was cute. I see. I didn't notice that I... I'm sorry. Uh... But Natsuki, you took it way too far. Yuri means well, and if you just told her how you felt, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Are you kidding? It's exactly what I did. No, it's not, girl. <laughs> it was her that... Natsuki, I think that's enough. You both said some things that you didn't mean. Yuri apologized. Don't you think you should, too? Mm, Natsuki clenches her fist. In the end, nobody has taken her side. She's trapped, at this point being defiant only because she can't handle the pressure. I end up even feeling bad for her. Um, sometimes when I'm hurt, it helps to take a walk and clear my head. Sayori, so she doesn't need to... You know what? I'm gonna do that. I'll... It'll spare me from having to look at your faces right now. Without warning, Natsuki snatches up her own poem up from the desk and storms out. On her way out, she crumples up the poem with her hands and throws it in the trash. Natsuki? She really didn't need to do that. I look across the room. Yuri has her chin buried in her hands while she stares down at her desk. I gingerly approach her and sit in the adjacent chair. Sigh. Everything all right? I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe I acted like that. You probably hate me now. No, Yuri. How could anyone not have gotten frustrated after being treated like that? You handled it as well as anyone could. I don't think any less of you. Well, all right. I believe you. Thanks, Karen. You're too kind. I'm thankful to have you as a part of the club now. Uh, it's nothing. One more thing. Um, that one thing that Natsuki said about, you know, I would never do anything so shameful. So, uh, what thing did Natsuki say? <laughs> um, well, never mind that. I'm gonna go make some tea. Uh, good idea. Make enough for more than one person, okay? Yeah. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say that it was worth it. It was alright, well, mostly. Karen, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learned something from your friends, too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Karen! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Yeah, Kitty, I want some cupcakes and tea too. We're having ribs though. Levi's smoking some ribs. So that's what I'm gonna have. And I think mac and cheese. Sayori! About what happened earlier. Uh, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no! That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise, they're both wonderful people. You don't... you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Karen, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me happiest. Aw, Sayori. And I think everyone really likes you, too. That's... Every day is going to be so much fun. <laughs> Uh, it looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone's nice, but does it really need to stop there? We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder, and I say that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah, let's do this. Uh, yeah, exactly, Lunar. Oh no. Sayori does not understand. Okay. Poem time! 
poem time. Okay, um, we're gonna pick big words. We're gonna go with big words. So determination, uh, uncontrollable. Yes, I'm getting it, guys, I'm getting it. Uh, despise. Uh, let's see, unstable. Mm, fickle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Imagination. Uh, entropy. Misery. Oh, missed one. That's okay. I don't need perfect, I don't think. Let's see. Uh, sunset. Nope. Mm, extreme. Uh, vivacious. Uh, mm, unending. Mm, let's see. Starscape. Uh, I want to pick Kitty. I just want to see who likes it. Oh, yeah, she likes it. I, did I pick that before? I don't remember. Um, let's see. Destiny. Uh, heaven Sent. Intellectual. And Extraordinary. Oh, Yuri likes that one. No, Yuri doesn't like that one, so Yuri likes that one. Um, infinite. Mm, effulgent. Okay. Yuri still loves us. We got the most for her. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. I did. I think I did too, Kitty. I'm really happy with this one. I do wish that this game put my Mad Libs into some kind of poem, but I guess that's too hard for the way the mini game works. Yeah, it's not just like, like I really have to work at it, you know, with this poem mini game. Hi, Karen. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood, but I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Huh? That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your poem, Sayori? Uh, why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh, Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets the contents spill into the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming in the classroom. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget you spent all your money so that I would have to lend you some. <laughs> but here's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves one option. <laughs> I give up. Hey, you can't be mad at Sayori for that, okay? You can't. I would do this, Sayori. I understand. I understand. Uh, don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Aha! I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri... Tell Karen to let me borrow some money. <laughs> money. She's like, money, please. Money, please. <laughs> that, don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Ah, uh, did I just? I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Oh, <laughs> wow, Yuri can get dark fast. I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's, there's no way you could think that. You were right though. I did something bad and now I have to accept the revolution. Wow, revolution, that's such a strong word for it, Sayori. Retribution, yes, that is what, that is what she meant. That, still coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, 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 you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. No, Say Sayori, Sayori's right. I would not have come if it weren't for cupcakes. <laughs> what? Did I slap her? Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and she tumbles onto the desk. Oh no, what hit her? 
out. What was, uh, a cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. So Yori glances around. Is this a miracle? It's a snack miracle. It's because I paid my restitution. <laughs> Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. I wonder if she got she had to make cupcakes under false pretenses. Is that why she was stoned? Maybe. Maybe that's why Natsuki had such a bad first impression on me. Oh, thank you so much for the follow. Um, Arsland DZ. I hope you are enjoying the Doki Doki Literature Club. We are playing blind. I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes, and it was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Okay, that was good, Natsuki. I agree with that level of meanness. That was funny. N Natsuki, that's so nice of you. So happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. <laughs> Please just eat it. <laughs> if it's a, it can hit her in the face if it's a snack. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So oh, good. <laughs> Mm. So Yori suddenly claps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> Aw, poor Sayori. You're going through a lot over just a cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez, beggars can't be choosers. Beers is chocolate. Why do you think I gave you the other one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Mm. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. <gasps> wow! Sneaky over the snacks there. God, Sayori. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Geez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Yeah, that's right, Kitty. I am that friend. I'm the eater of the food. <laughs> uh, where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm, that's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Uh, you don't think she... she has a... I wouldn't be surprised. It's probably more desirable than any of us combined. Oh, uh, that's true. Excuse me. Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, uh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Uh, Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. But boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. That makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Karen. Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Aha, uh -huh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? Not really. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. You know, I think here's the thing that's going on that I, I know about myself. I am Sayori, and I want to be Yuri. So that's, that's that about that. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Hey Yuri! Huh? Uh, I suddenly noticed that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. She's in the closet a lot. I know, Kitty, she needs to come out of the closet. I think I'm already, like, kind of shipping Natsuki and Sayori. Um, in this game. I don't know if like there's much shipping that people do with uh, Doki Doki, but I'm feeling that pairing, you know what I mean? 
Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Ah, uh, no. I was kind of just waiting for you, and if that's the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing I can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this into the teacher's desk and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking and mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Uh, I might as well walk with you. Oh, that was smooth. That was smooth. Yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Where are you two off to? Uh, we're just... Yuri's gonna make some tea, so... I suddenly realize how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Uh, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. That's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... Monica, please mind your business for once. <laughs> or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve Karen in club activities? <laughs> uh, my mouth gapes. I... I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Hmm. Monica's quite jealous for somebody that isn't one of the little figures I can make the poems for. Like, I can't even have Monica as a choice. Then let's go, Karen. Uh, Yuri quickly exits the room and I follow. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri, I just... Something about the way she said that. It made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri... I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but it's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Karen, how come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because nothing that you do is as bad as, make, as you make it seem in your head. One second, I'm getting a text message, y'all. Nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions and we can't always hide them away, but you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Uh, no, wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say? Uh, mm, Yuri lifts her head. Karen, I really like being friends with you. Uh, thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you, too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that, but I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway, uh, yeah, shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. Karen, do you like oolong tea? They're right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, anything's fine. Very well. Here he sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You're ready to do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do anything less when I'm making tea for others, even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. <laughs> In that case, you'll really only be even more impressed. Uh, perhaps I will. All right, guys. Um, I have. We have a guest. We have a guest here today that wants to say hi. Hey, get down farther. Okay. You have to get... Can you? Are you good? Yeah, I can get down. Okay. This is my mom, guys. Hi, everybody. <laughs> this is Karen's mom. <laughs> hey, kitty. Hey, so she's got the unicorn thing got on. Got the unicorn thing on. <laughs> hey, guys. Lunar says hi, too. Hi, Luna. <laughs> Luna, Luna. Yeah, Luna or Lunar. Either is fine. <laughs> this is my mom, guys. So y'all know I told you last stream that we were in Alabama for some special circumstances. That why my, that's why my background's all different. Um, but this is my mom. Hi. <laughs> nice to meet all of y'all. <laughs> all right. If you want to hang out, you can. If you want to pull up a chair. No, I think I'm going to head on back. Okay. Sit outside and watch some... Watching some TV, okay. watching some baseball and football. I'm kind of a sports person. Yeah. <laughs> who, who are you watching right now? 
Uh, we're watching some college football. I can't tell you who it is right now, but okay. it just started. <laughs> I was going to ask who was winning, but if it just started, Nobody's we don't winning. know they yet. just started. <laughs> Bye-bye, everybody. All right. Bye, Mom. See you later. <laughs> Fall out of here now. <laughs> you got it? Well, I know I've got like a lot of cords right there. Okay, she made it, guys. <laughs> That's my mom. Your mother's old. <laughs> You're not that old. I'm on social security. Well, <laughs> I don't know. What is it? 65 is the new, 65, new 40. Yeah, 65 is the new 40. Yeah, like <laughs> All right, guys. Um, okay. Ah, uh, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. To if he wants to come say hi, he can. Okay. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show, and you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. And it turns out, it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around anyway. Aww. I thought your first poem was very expressive, Yuri. Ah, uh, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Karen. It's very endearing. Aww. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Karen, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over my desk. Why should a teenager have a problem with her back? Ah, uh, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Oh, that's sad. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my, uh, my... Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading. Yes! I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. Yeah, that's right, Lunar. Hey, guys, my dad wants to come oh, say hi, too. Yeah. Oh, other way. There you go. He's getting his costume on. Okay, come on down here and you kneel kind of beside Karen. <laughs> yeah. So, here I'll scoot over a little. So you gotta, there's the camera right there. This is my dad, guys. So you've probably only seen him on the Instagrams. Yeah, but here he is, real in the flesh. You see right there, Kitty says hi, and Lunar says hi. Stream dad. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> wave to him. Yeah. You can wave to him. <laughs> they like your cat ears. <laughs> see? You can see over here the chat. <laughs> oh, it's just a whole new world for me. Yeah. They said it's so special. <laughs> it is special. Yeah. Thank you very right. much. Thank you. No problem. Of course. You can come say hi wow. anytime. But you have to wear Hello. the cat ears. You do have to wear the cat ears. That's part of it. <laughs> you do have to wear the cat ears. That's part of it. That's okay. part of this costume. <laughs> okay. You need some help. Need some help oh, getting back up. My turn. Done. You, you're done. <laughs> yep. Unless you want to say nice something to else. Nice to meet you very much. Thank you. <laughs> See, they said I adore this, and this is so special. Oh my god. <laughs> Don't trip over all the cords. We need to clip the stream of mom and dad. Okay, someone clip that. Someone clip that. Um. <laughs> my wonderful daughter. I'll take good care of her. <laughs> okay. All right, guys, if you didn't clip that, then I'll make sure to clip it when the VOD is um, done later. Okay, I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Uh, I have some chocolate as well. Yeah, that's fine. I got it. It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I keep hidden from Sayori's candy radar. <laughs> I take it since it'll go down well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see you too well. I can't see too well. Yuri slides closer into our shoulders are touching. <gasps> How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup... Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. <sighs> because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Oh my god. <laughs> this poor guy. This poor guy. <laughs> Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. 
Yep. Yeah, Lunar, that's that's what's going on here. <laughs> she just didn't want to she didn't want to explain it to him. Um, after a few minutes, I finally managed to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Uh, sorry, I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Uh, that's... that's okay. I won't take any. Are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then I might get smudges on the pages. Uh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Oh, we get another nice different shot. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri's already focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Huh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Um, Karen... Sorry, I guess I shouldn't have done that. That's... well, you were just helping. That's something that friends do. Right, friends. We're friends. Right. I mean, not really in this kind of context, but yeah, that's all it was. Yeah, then you don't need to stop or anything. I see. You did, Kendra. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We'll make some clips for you, though. Oh, you clipped it? Link link the clip for Kendra so she can go watch it. Um, I see. The situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book, but I can just tell by her expression that even she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers, but this time, Yuri's eyes meet mine. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling with the rhythm of her breaths. I bet you notice her chest. Um, I raise my arm. Uh, like before, Yuri parts her lips, but it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Okay, everyone, wow! Monica! Why did you cut me off like that? That was heckin' rude. That was heckin' rude, Monica. I know you're jealous, but oh my god. Wah, ah, uh, Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems, Karen. You can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. I'll, I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling that this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Who should I show my poem to first? Okay, we'll do Sayori first, um, since Lunar wanted that last time when we chose Yuri. So we'll do Sayori. Oh, I like this one, Karen. It has some nice feelings in it. Uh, I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Mm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. That's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad, but that's why I just go in my heart. But if it makes me feel, feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of the whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah. Me neither. Wow, <laughs> so helpful, Sayori. Uh, why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Uh, you don't want to write something for me. That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm, I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems, too. Sometimes, a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. What a good airhead. She is. Sayori's a very good airhead. Yeah, I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most, but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head and sad poem can... Help give the rain cloud a little hug and make a nice, happy rainbow. Sayori, that's 
unexpectedly poetic. Huh? Is it? Maybe I'm getting a little better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Karen. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Well, this is a long one. Okay, bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. There's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe, and I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle is starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time's elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more, and my friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up, and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts. Thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Oh, that is bittersweet. Holy crap, Siri, did you really write this? Of course I did. I didn't tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever. Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. It's not creepy. Why would I say that? Well, not exactly. Maybe it's because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like it was meant to ex I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it, no more than a week later. <laughs> Sayori is right. Um, I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. That was nice. Okay, now Yuri. Okay, best girl, let's go. I love her so much. She's totally your type, Lunar. I see it. I understand. <laughs> let's see what you've written for today. Uh, Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Karen, this one might even be better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why you did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah, just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah. I do. If it's with you. It happened, oh, the raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that raccoon, <laughs> rip. <laughs> well aware that the raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. 
the bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon increments, yeah, the moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited, or perhaps I'm wisely project merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You can say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement, a rush of blood, classic Pelovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. Mmm, I was a little bit more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I'll go ahead and hydrate for you, Lunar. Thank you. I don't know if I want to say what it sounds like it's about. <clears throat> I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So it's sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Because they're embarrassing and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Karen? Well, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities, even if it's difficult sometimes and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit over now, but I'm glad you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things, writing, listening. There really aren't many people like you, Karen. That's exaggerating a little bit. It's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing, but now I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. It's nothing, really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. For just a moment, her tippiness seems to disappear. Wow, okay. <sighs> These poor girls, they all seem to have serious problems. Uh, the more I get to know them. Okay, uh, let's go with Natsuki, because I'm kind of mad at Monica for interrupting my chocolate makeout session that was about to happen. All right, come on, Natsuki. Hmm, well, I can admit that it's better than the last one. It's nice to see you're putting in some effort. That's good. But I still don't like this at all. It's trying too hard to be serious. Huh? What do you mean by that? Poems don't need to be all deep sounding to express something. It's going to just sound like you're forcing it unless you really don't suck at it. Honestly, don't bother trying to write poems like this until you're on Yuri's level. Shut up, Natsuki, my god! Just let me live! Natsuki stopped short all of a sudden. Don't tell me. Huh? You're not- you're not just trying to impress Yuri, are you? Yeah, I'm trying to impress Yuri. Have you not been paying attention? Hey, Tap, welcome on in, welcome on in. What are you talking about? And keep your voice down! You know Yuri would love this kind of, this angsty. Just because she's a talented writer doesn't mean, I mean, ugh, it looks like I'm in trouble. I somehow struck a nerve, though what I did is beyond me. I'm so done with you. I'm so done with you too, Natsuki. Natsuki shoves the poem I handed her back over to me. Take your stupid poem if you wrote it for someone else, just don't show it to me. Ouch. This is what I get for letting a young girl step into my business. Unless I was a mind reader, I was destined to be in a world of pain from the start. At least Natsuki wasn't really the girl I was trying to impress in the first place. I didn't even get to read Natsuki's poem. She didn't even show it to me, did she? Oh my gosh. <gasps> Who should I show my poem to next? I guess Monica next. Hi again, Karen. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Uh, I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. All right, this one's good. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. 
Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration on Yuri's writing style? Hmm, I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I notice that too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside of her. Mm-hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much more personal conversations out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on in that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just meant that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still, defending her like that, you must be pretty into her. <laughs> you completely misunderstood. No, Monica, you completely understood. Uh, calm down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. I got so excited for a cat girl's just a bow. Yeah, there's no cat girls in this, uh, Kendra. At this point, it seems like they're all actually high school girls. And there's no vampires or cat girls or, you know, anything crazy like that. Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one anyway. Monica kind of whispers the last part to me. It's just a hunch, but, well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. But anyway. Do you want to read my poem now? I guess, Monica, after you've made fun of Yuri, that's fine. I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. Save me. Okay. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue. The endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating, waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaninglessness. Load me. Load me? Load you where? Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one. Uh-huh. I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. Kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. Uh, thank you for the hydrate, Kendra. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines, really short, makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. Uh -huh. Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be abstract as a physical expression of feeling, or as or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. I think she means she has a hard time being weird and shady chick. <laughs> yeah, something. <clears throat> load her into the matrix that's what i feel like she was trying to say kendra i think she was trying to say like i want to go into the matrix <laughs> uh here's monica's writing tip of the day sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision when that happens don't forget to save your game you never know when you might change your mind or when something unexpected may happen wait is this tip even about writing okay i definitely think she's talking about plugging her into the matrix now um, what am I even talking about? Okay, well, we're gonna click save. I haven't saved the game at all, so there we go. N no, return, okay. Aha, that's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, that was really weird. Okay, everyone, we're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned for today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Uh, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? P uh, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event, but the cool part is we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. 
Sayori's putting it on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting posters up, did you? Well, I did. So you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no, it's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys? No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. But I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. We start the event and each put on a good performance and it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feeling that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it takes, if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you two can do it. <laughs> they disagree. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice. Ah, uh, that's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. The club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh, gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move into the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh, no. Don't worry. I'll start off with everyone... I'll start off to help everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. Can I go next? Of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. Then she stands behind the podium. The title of the poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. The clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. This is something she's done before, or is this simply natural? I glance around me. Oh. I accidentally right-clicked. Apparently that makes the text box go away. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica! <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I'll go next. Ah! Uh, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. The poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering voice transforms into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she, that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back to reality and glances around her, as if she's bewildered, even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterwards and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. Yay! It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught off so off guard that we must have forgotten. 
As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm next then. Sayori so hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Uh, aha. Sorry, I giggled. Hehe, <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not to think like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out best that way. I see, I see. Okay then, Sayori so begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it, but hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into something I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. Even Karen liked it. I guess that's a good sign. I liked all the poems. I thought they were great. Um, what does it even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be the other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Uh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where the sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work so well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. The next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. <laughs> don't make me go before Karen. It's not like I can compare you guys anyway. Might as well let Karen lower everyone's standards a little bit before I have to do it. Natsuki? It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the poem. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's really nice of you to say, Monica. That's something I'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right, then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting? Hmm. Anyway, the poem's called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. I'm concerned it's called Jump 2, Kitty. I mean, all these girls seem to have like serious issues going on with them. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. When it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just it, so... Oh, hey, Jane! You came in right at the end. We're, we're about to end stream today. As soon as this scene is over. Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone, I think that's about it for today. Okay, I'm gonna click save because I wanna make sure that I can. All right. Um, I know the festival's coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have a weekend to prepare. Monday's a big day. I can't wait! I can't do this, I can't do this. All right. <laughs> Poor Yuri. 
I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club, I'm impressing and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Hehe. <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Karen, you don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. All right, so we are gonna save right here. Yes, I do. Okay, and um, next Thursday we will resume with some more Doki Doki Literature Club. Um, I think I should be able to finish the game based on what I know about how long it takes, but if not, we'll do one more Doki Doki stream after that. Um, this has been really fun so far. We haven't gotten to anything too crazy, but those poems, some of them are pretty dark, so I'm interested in what we're in store for. Here, um, I'll switch back. Okay, guys. Um, and then close the game because it's quite loud. Yes, I do want to quit. Okay, all right, guys. It felt appropriate. Um, Miss Cupcake is streaming right now, so that's who we're going to raid today. We're going to raid um, Miss Cupcake. That feels right. Okay, guys. Um, you know you know how it works. You know where I am. I'll do my put my socials in the chat. Follow me in all the places. If you um, if you want to donate or things like that, I do everything the way all content creators do it all the, the same things you're used to seeing. Um, on Saturday, I will see you for Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban with Landon. We're gonna have our next Harry Potter episode, finally. Um, I know we've had some scheduling issues with that. And I will see you again next Thursday for more Doki Doki. All right, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget, of course, to make it a great day.